Okay, in this segment, we're going to describe uh, the tool BWCTL, which stands for Bandwidth Control. Uh, BWCTL is a wrapper around all the various Perfsonar tools and ensures that only one tool is running at a time on a host so that tools don't conflict with each other and step on each other. BWCTL can run a number of tools, including iPerf, iPerf3, NUTTCP, ping, OWPing, traceroute, tracepath, and Paris traceroute. In this segment, we're going to focus on BWCTL running iPerf3. So here's an example running BWCTL with iPerf3. We give BWCTL dash capital T flag for the tool. Uh, dash C is the catcher, or the host that's receiving the data. And dash S is the sender, the host sending the data. In this case, because it's running on my laptop, I have to give it the dash A flag to tell it to ignore the time synchronization of my laptop. It's hard to get a laptop with good time sync. Um, and I'm going to give it a run for a 15 second test. Okay, so here we see the results. iperf3 by default uh, gives a one second interval report. It shows the number of TCP retransmits, which is nice in this case, uh, the network is clean. But the performance isn't very good. We're only getting 350 megabits per second on this, and this is an end-to-end -end 10 gigabit per second path. Uh, so we wonder why that is. Well, you can look here at the congestion window column and see that the congestion window maxes out at 3 megabytes per second. That's due to Linux default values for congestion window are not large enough for this sort of testing for 10 gig paths. So next we go in, uh, we'll go in, and I won't show that on my screen, um, but uh, we'll go and change the uh, TCP buffer settings to be um, 64 megabytes. And we rerun the test. OK, so now you see a huge difference in performance. Rather than 340 megabits per second, we're getting almost 9 gigabits per second. Um, and you see the congestion window opens up to uh, what's reported here at 85 megabytes per second. Uh, so huge, huge difference by just tuning your TCP buffers. Um, the other thing you note here is that it does take TCP a while to ramp up. Um, in this case, it takes roughly seven seconds for TCP to fully ramp up to the top speed, maybe eight seconds. Uh, another option to iperf3, which you can trigger through BWCTL, is the dash capital O flag to uh, omit the beginning of the test in your results. So we'll rerun the test here using the dash um, O flag for eight seconds. And you'll see here in the previous test, that while at the end of our testing we were getting almost 9 gigabits per second, the average for the entire 15 second test was only 5 gigabytes per second due to that ramp up time. Now by using the dash O flag, and we need to wait for the results here. Okay, so by using the, the dash O flag, you'll see that we get um, not quite 9 gigabits per second, but we get 7.8 gigabits per second, which is much closer to the the, the final rate because the first several seconds were omitted. Um, so that, that you can see how that makes a, quite a bit of difference. Uh, in our next test, we're going to show the impact of adding packet loss to this path. Uh, we're going to use the Linux um, network emulation package and the TC command to add 0.1% packet loss. And we run the test again. Okay, and now you see that there's a continuous stream of packet retransmits. Not that many, only 16 retransmits total. But those 16 packet retransmits cause TCP to drop from eight, roughly 8 uh, gigabits per second down to uh, an average performance or a maximum performance, in this case, of 136 megabits per second. So a huge impact on performance by just a very small amount of uh, packet loss. One final thing to show is the verbose flag, which gives you a lot more information about what's going on. OK, so in this case, you can see that iPerf uh, reports what uh, CPU it's using. So you can tell whether your process is 
limited by your CPU or limited by your network. Uh, and it shows both the sender CPU and the receiver CPU. Uh, you can see that it's not using very much CPU at all, partly because of the TCP retransmits. In some cases, you'll actually be limited by a slow host, and this helps you diagnose that issue.